Hello everyone, how are you doing? I uh, hope that you have had a very good, good week and a good day so far. I'm so glad that we are coming back to you with Commonwealth. We took a pause. You know that every Monday we would come at 3 p.m. with Commonwealth and uh, we would get into just trying to understand what God's mind is concerning wealth, wealth creation, stewardship, kingdom principles and I am glad that we are back on this particular platform uh, and today who better to have over here than the man who is teaching believers how to be economically empowered and that is the CEO of Deep Believers Economic Empowerment Program uh, that is Mr. Geoffrey Kilonzo who is a lot of other things and he has been here several times as well we've done with him quite some talk uh, so please subscribe to the Covenant channel, yes, subscribe to the Covenant channel and uh, like, comment on and share the video, share this stream. If you can host a watch party, please do so, so that your friends and your neighbors and your family, your fraternity can be linked to what we're going to be talking about today because we want to be talking about picking up the pieces. Uh, people have gone through all kinds of situations businesses have some have actually collapsed some are barely surviving and now we want to know how to pick up the pieces Geoffrey it's good to have you here man thank you so very much Reverend yeah. it's always a pleasure it's always a pleasure to have you as well thank and you and you are finally dressed up <laughs> after, after you <laughs> taking yeah. after you know whenever whenever I uh, uh, meeting somebody and hosting mm -hmm. them, I want to normally just try to be on the <laughs> level ground with them. Uh, yeah. I told you we were just doing smart, and then you did a total executive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a weekday and it's a working day. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. sometimes you have nothing else to do uh, but to just be official. And sometimes you're in the midst of a number exactly. of things at the same time. Exactly. So yeah. Um, yeah. we yeah. thank God. I'm just myself today. How, how has the Believers Economic Empowerment Program been this season? You've been doing a lot of trainings and stuff on, mm -hmm. online. How has that been? Yeah, it, it has been quite good. And I think many people before COVID-19 yeah. never took training seriously. Right. Until, in fact, we were not busy before, uh, before COVID-19. But after COVID-19, I immediately started online trainings. Right. And to my surprise, the first class I had, I had 15 people mm. that were training for seven weeks. Wow. And, and people would stay for three days a week, an hour, right. online, right. and nobody could exit. And that told me that, it, it taught me that um, people are not anxious you know to, to not they're not sure about tomorrow right. and they want to learn more not only that that i've done business dialogues and right. have, have had people 65 people many people coming through to listen to people talk about business right and also career wise uh, many people lost their jobs and we are now talking about moving from being an employee to employer and so trainings have taken shape people have valued them more than they used to and we are, they, I think people are appreciating it. Above all, we are also doing a program with the government, uh, okay. you know, with Kenya Youth Employment and Opportunities Project. And uh, I also appreciate the move that the government has taken. I think sometimes it's good to appreciate and not criticize everything. <laughs> uh, the government is doing something with the youth and that's quite a good move. All right, you know, and we'll talk about that and we really get into what we want to talk about mm -hmm. today. Do you think that you, you say that the trainings have picked up in the COVID season. Yeah. Is it a matter of, you know, the necessity now? It's causing people to feel like they've got to empower themselves for invention. Because it, it says necessity is the matter of invention. Yeah. But then not everybody mm -hmm. can actually get into the place of inventing anything. Yeah. So now necessity is pushing people to the place where they feel like, I need life skills. Exactly. I need to be empowered. Mm -hmm. um, you think that that has created that appreciation for the need of skills? Very much. Um, there's someone who said, uh, innovate and adopt, or refuse to innovate and adopt, then die. Right. And I think we've come to a point where you either innovate and adopt or you don't do it, then you die. Right. And when people are caught 
unawares by something like COVID-19, right. they, they now realize their weaknesses and their gaps. Yeah. And it's when they realize their gaps, which are now exposed by such a thing like a pandemic, they run to where they can you know, fill that gap. And I think that's, that is what has triggered the need for trainings. Uh, and not only that, if you look for, you look at uh, the Facebook Live and other programs, the numbers that are following those programs are many. And like long, uh, you know, before when people could go live and a few people are following, why? Because people are now, are now valuing knowledge. Right. I'm telling you, when you hit hard, you have nothing to do but to cry out. Right. And when you cry out, people are now crying out to people that can give them knowledge on how they can, uh, you know, change and innovate in uh, such a time as this. And that's oh, what we've done well, so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's somebody who's sitting at home right now, or sitting in an office, mm -hmm. uh, they're leading an organization. I know that we've spoken about leadership mm -hmm. uh, before we spoke about leading without a compass yeah. in a different setup. Mm -hmm. uh, then we spoke about several things that people can try to do yeah. just to survive the COVID season. Yes. But now, people have to pick up the pieces. Mm -hmm. Some guys are not going to go back to work. Yeah, right. um, I was meeting a gentleman who is a CEO with one of the real estate firms mm -hmm. and he told me he's not even sure they will ever get back to an office. They've That's really true. cut down on the office space mm -hmm. and now they just are keeping an office space because of the regulator. Yeah, right. CMA must have a place that they can come to. Mm -hmm. If not, they would all be working from, from home. home. Yes. Um, so how do people begin to pick up the pieces mm -hmm. and uh, what principles are we supposed to look at? Yeah. If I've lost my job, if I have relocated, if mm -hmm. I had to go up country and I still cannot get my way back over here, yeah. what are some of the things we need to consider? L let me start with the, because there are two categories of people here. Let me, let's start with the, the employed people, mm -hmm. they that were employed. There are two things that have happened. Uh, you've either lost your job or you had a pay cut. Yeah. Because those are the two options. If you lost your job, the best thing to do now is not to sit and cry or mourn about your job about loss. The job, right. Is to think, to bounce back quickly and think about what to do. And I'm coming to that. The person who, had gotten a, who has gotten a pay cut, the other thing is to think about, you know, the after five. Your yeah. after five. Uh, I was watching a story uh, about Manu Chandaria, he's a well-known businessman in Kenya, and he was talking about how he worked 16 hours, right. even at, at his age. And that really challenged me because this is the lifestyle of the Europeans and um, you know Americans. They would take up two jobs, eight hours, eight hours. But Africa, we are used to the eight hours. Possibly because of our traffic Are we jam. even used to the eight hours? Oh, even within the eight, we want to come late, mm -hmm. leave early, and yes. do the least. Exactly. You know, it, it's just a place of, this is where I work, but yeah. you don't really want the work, right? It's comfort. It's comfort because most of you are paying uh, rent cheap or uh, you even working from home with your right. own village or the, the costs are not as high as you compare with Europe, Europe and uh, you know the, the West. If we can embrace the extra mile principle right. it will work for everyone why am i saying extra mile there's a book called the 10x 10x principle and you have to do something more than you used to do before for you to to be able to cover up what you're losing because okay. if you ever had a half pay cut or half salary pay cut you need to do either another job or you need to start a side business that will cover up on what you've lost right. otherwise if you give up now you're actually going to take a dive uh, and dive on uh, your business or your, or your income. So I would challenge people that have gotten a pay cut to add on something else. But the person who lost a job, then you have to start a business. You have no option. As you start your business, I always say this, not everyone is wired for business. True. Not everyone is, is wired right. for business. Right. If you completely feel that you're wired for employment, then you have to look for something to keep doing as you can keep on, keep on applying for, other, for jobs. another job right? exactly right you don't sit and see there are no jobs you go to you go online today my job mag you go to brighter monday you still find jobs being uh, un 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 advertised, advertised right. so don't sit and complain jobs are still being advertised uh, do something apply for jobs talk to friends and find what you can do All otherwise right. you have to rise up and do now that that category are the businesses mm. these are employed people Businesses have taken a nosedive, all of them, 
I mean everywhere. I, I, including NGOs because funding has gone down as well. Yeah, yeah. Social entrep entrepreneurship has been affected ministry wise. Churches have been affected. Yeah. So everyone is feeling the pain as it is now. Yeah. Even governments. I mean, we... How are churches supposed to survive? <laughs> um, how are they supposed to pick up the pieces? You mentioned that and it is really true that mm -hmm. churches have been affected, especially when it comes to the funding of mm -hmm. their ministry operations. Yeah. Um, and you know, churches also have employees sometimes and I think that one of the most yeah. difficult decisions to make mm -hmm. is when a church has to declare redundancy on some employees because yeah. you're supposed to be seen as the place where there's salvation yes. and then you're the place that creates this joblessness how are these people supposed to survive <laughs> you know sometimes we separate business uh, running a church from business management right. and much as I understand running a church you have to manage a church like you can manage a business. Right. And some decisions have to be separated from spiritual to, to actual, to factual. Okay. And when you're taking an, a reality check, you have to check on the, you know, the employees. Am I able to carry this baggage? Because one of the right. things that you have to do is uh, cut down on costs. Right. Like you began by saying, if you're having an office that you're paying 150,000 Kenya shillings and you only three or few that are reporting there, I've, I know people are reporting in shifts. Right. Three people, five people, four people. Then do you really need that office or you can have one desk which can be used by two people? There's, a, there's something in business we call the hot desk. Uh, yes, you know, yes, but, but, yes, you yes. know that. Yeah. Where you can only have one desk and used in us. And you, you realize that you can have many people working for you, but very uh, small office. Right. So you must think about cutting costs. Now let me just give a few principles that uh, you asked. Right. And, and these are applicable both for in churches, in businesses, whatever you're doing. Whether you're a social entrepreneur, techno entrepreneur, or whether you are uh, uh, you know, a churchpreneur, uh, because I would call a churchpreneur. The, the a lot of preneurs today. Okay. <laughs> very many preneurs, churchpreneurs as well. Tenderpreneurs. Tenderpreneur. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that you must understand is resilience. Okay. You know, the principle of resilience. I'll just mention them and I'll just pick uh, maybe a two or three and then we can discuss that. Number two is agility. All right. The principle of resilience, the principle of agility, then the principle of adaptability. Right. That's very critical. Adaptability. Number four, pivoting. Okay. And, and that's something that you put, you mentioned a bit, and I'll come to that. Then crisis management, and, and um, number four, number what? I've uh, mentioned six of them is emotional intelligence. Those are the key ones that I would mention right now. All right. And, and maybe to just start with resilience, okay. because I, I just want to uh, bring them close to our rethinking. Biblically, there are men of God who were known for resilience, and one of them is Moses. Right. Moses was a very resilient leader all the way from getting the, Egypt, uh, the Israelites from Egypt to taking them close to the promised land. Right. Look at Joseph, look at Daniel, look at Nehemiah. They were known for resilience. Now, resilience is the, uh, the ability to resume your original size, right. you know, and shape after, and shape after deformation. Your ability to, uh, to, to come back to your original size original and shape size. Right. after deformation. So we have been deformed by COVID-19. How then do you manage to come back to your normal size right. or your original size and shape? That's right. resilience. That's resilience. Resilience is an organization for resistance to failure. How much you can be stretched and still resist breaking. That's your resilience. Right, right. And I would want to ad advise everyone to look at their resilience. Yeah. How? Because there are, there, are, there are ways of, you know, working on resilience. Number one is preparation. Okay. Now we know that COVID-19 came and, and people are not prepared. Yes. But yes. there's always something about risk management. Mm -hmm. And risk management is you need to understand these things may happen. You can't ignore them. Yeah. When they happen, then you need the preparedness. Yes. People now know that savings are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they were not prepared before. And that's an art of resilience. If you are running a company, you need to have insurance. Put insurance in place. If you have stock, you now know that you need insurance. We're not to supposed cover. to live by faith. <laughs> Let me tell you. Insurance faith and faith. Is good. <laughs> faith is good, but wisdom. Right. Wisdom right. is important. Wisdom right. is a principal thing. Yes. Because I think insurance is a wisdom thing. It's a wisdom yeah. application. Yeah. Yeah. More than a faith idea. 
Okay. Faith is good, but if, if you're given this laptop, you don't go and drop it on the floor True. and say, I have faith, it will not break. True. True. Jesus, Jesus was told by the, the devil, jump, jump over, over the temple. Yeah. What did he say? You don't try. Yeah, God. yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't. I don't think you should try God. <laughs> God, God so I think in your faith. Right. The other thing about a resilience man of God is protect. Number one, I say prepare. Number two right. is protect. Right. Right. Whatever you have now remaining, protect it, mm. guard it, make sure that you're not losing more. And we many at times forget to protect money, more wow. especially. Wow. How do we forget to protect money? having a budget in place and sticking to it is critical you cannot be resilient enough without having a plan and staying to sticking to that plan many people live like they are in in, in another continent okay. no plan no idea of what to do tomorrow and they want to wake up and things will work things don't just work mm. plan and to look at an example that is given in proverbs of the end the right, bible says go right. unto the end why don't because, slug it. <laughs> oh, you slug it. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because the ant example there is an idea of planning. Right. It knows there's winter and there's summer. And during summer, we have to prepare for winter. Right. So everybody who is going to survive now and after, they have to protect what they have. Then respond to issues. Mm. You have a COVID issue here. You have to respond to it. How do you respond? By taking the necessary measures. And finally, recovery. All right. Those so are four steps in about, resilience. You've talked about protection. Mm -hmm. You have talked about. You've talked about preparation. Preparation. You've talked about protect, protection. Mm -hmm. And then you have talked about response. Response. And, the recovery. and then recovery. Yes. You, you know, as you talk about the the protection and these budgets, and then mm -hmm. you, not many people are very good at at budgeting mm -hmm. as well. So somebody yes. will be sitting there and saying, you know. I think the reason you talk about the budget <laughs> is because you earn a bit more and I earn very little. It cannot even meet my basic needs. So I'm not going to budget. Budget is for people who have excess. Is that yeah. a true? Uh, That's not a true position. Let me tell you the truth, uh, Reverend, is we have to create a funnel. All right. Everyone has to create a financial funnel. And a financial funnel means create a wider input or you know um, let me call it what cash in and, right. a, and a thinner cash out okay principle okay and that can only happen by understanding your income so you cannot wait, have wait, a wait, Jeffrey, you know i'm sitting here on the behalf of the people who are watching <laughs> please uh, so ahead. how do you separate that from stinginess <laughs> <laughs> Because somebody could just you know use that mm -hmm. somebody who is just stingy Mm -hmm. And say, did you hear him say that <laughs> the cash in should be wide and the cash, and the out, cash out should be out. narrow? How do you separate that and stinginess? By working in principles. Okay. See, I was saying, if you <laughs> if you have a, a smaller output, right. you're only controlling. Okay. And in every business, including our, our lives, there are two there are two uh, groups of uh, Greeks that I, I, I learned about. The Edens and the the, the Spartans. Mm -hmm. The Spartans were were not stingy, but they were very careful on wealth creation. Okay. Why? Because they whatever they got, they created wealth. They accumulated wealth. Mm -hmm. Now, principles of wealth creation does not mean you remain stingy, right. because if you look at the principles of the Jews, the Jews are known to be stingy, but they are also very good givers. Correct. Why? Because they know that they have to give Shadaka. And for them, Shadaka is actually justice. It's not just a giving that they are right. giving to help. Right. It's the justice. If you don't give to the needy, you're not doing justice. Right. And they believe that God is a God of justice right. and is a God of the poor and the needy. So right. we have to do that. They have to support kingdom of God. They have right. to give to the church. Right. You must tithe your money. You must give your offering and give beyond, even seed. So applying principles does not make you um, disorganized. But every time you have money, you plan it. You plan it. And that is how you create a funnel. So I know I earn 10,000. When someone comes to church and pledges 50,000, mm. I should not, and that's a problem, I should not compare myself to that to person, person because I don't know their income. Right. And I don't know how their funnel looks like. 
and sometimes I feel like the reason people don't even have seed to sow mm -hmm. is because they have not managed the money that they have. Exactly. Because if you are earning this 10,000 and you're able to save maybe even 500 mm -hmm. every month, yeah. Uh, at the end of the year, you have got some 6,000 and at the end of the next year, you yeah. got some 12,000. Sure. You can actually pull out and say, I've got this 4,000 that I'm going to sow as a seed. Mm -hmm. the, the person has a seed because they have been keeping something. And I think exactly. that's natural even for farmers, right? The, truth. the reason they have seed to sow is because they've stored something. Yeah. If they ate everything mm -hmm. that they were getting, they wouldn't even have the seed. They wouldn't have the seed to sow. To sow. So you have to know your money. All Personally, right. I say, name your money. Every right. coin you get, name it. Okay. Once you name your money, you will know. Even if pressure comes, you not give your mother-in-law money that does that is not named mother-in-law. <laughs> and I'm telling you, yeah, what do you think about know your money? <laughs> People talk about money will know your name. <laughs> but you, you you were saying that. Uh, if I pick it correctly, we yeah. cannot just be hiding under Pentecostal jargon, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> we can't just be going in stuff That's like what that. the problem is because we spiritualize everything. Right. I'm telling you, we should not have money control our emotions. Okay. We should control money. And many people, they are either happy or unhappy based on the money in the pocket. Right. And the moment you realize that you have issues with money and your moods are controlled by and determined by the amount of money you have, then you, you do not have emotional intelligence. Remember what I said? Right. Because emotional intelligence is your ability to resist pressure that comes from every, anywhere. And, and I, when I look at pressure, I look at Abraham. Sometimes you have internal pressure, external pressure. You have pressure from every corner. If you look at Abraham, there was pressure from Sarah to take Hagar, you yes, know, for, yes. for to, to, get, to get a son. Right. And Abraham also had an internal pressure that I'm growing old. Right. If you are not able to control the pressure that is coming on you, you actually live someone else's life. Yes, and yes. as this time, I would say this, if you have to sell your car and buy a smaller car, do it. Right. If you have to move from that 28,000, 50,000 house, go to a one bedroom, to be do it because you are doing it for the for future, yes. not now. And those are some of the things that we need to do and advise people right now. Right. Stop living other people's lives. You don't know how deep their pockets are. Just be real to yourself. And sometimes you don't know how deep their debts are. Because <laughs> they could also be they could also be trying to make it look like they're doing well, mm -hmm. but they are deeply yeah. in debt. They're not sleeping in the night. <laughs> you see. I, I was someone wrote somewhere and said, just pay debts and live sleep freely. I, I would I would also say this. Uh, yeah. compare, comparison is also very bad. Right. And uh, this is also with companies don't compare your company with another right. it's good to benchmark but benchmark in areas that you only think is necessary okay don't if you're a smaller real estate company don't start comparing yourself with a huge real estate companies yeah. because what you'll do is you're running someone else's race right. and you break very soon right. so be resilient in the way you do things protect yourself protect your mind protect the people now before we, 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 we quit, let me just take, touch on something. Right. When you talk about uh, cutting down costs and you ask the question of so the, the church, you must balance solvency and, 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 uh, and, and what? Let me solvency and longevity of the company. Right. Or what you call the, um, I'm looking for this name, but how you're going to in, be inherited you know, yeah. by other people mentoring people that will take after you yeah. many times when companies are cutting on cost and especially when it comes to employees they forget and they let go the best talent in their company All right sometimes you have to bite the bullet and say i'm not letting this one go because Much you're as looking this, at the legacy the of legacy of right. your company and business including yeah. the church yeah. imagine today you're under pressure and there's no money and then you let go one gift that supports you most yeah, what happens? Yeah, yeah. You re you now go back to strangling. So <laughs> I'm actually feeling very intelligent right now <laughs> because you know, um, and I've had that discussion even from a church perspective. I've had that discussion mm -hmm. that you see, you must always believe yeah. in the fact that you will come back up. Yes. And so what you're saying, like you believe you, you come back up, and when you come back up, mm -hmm. do you want to come back without? 
uh -huh. this kind of skill set, yes. without this level of gifting, exactly. without this kind of heart. Mm -hmm. Because again, sometimes you can get skills in the future, but not get the same heart. The same. And remember the investment <laughs> you've put in these people. Yeah. Because the, someone you've worked with for 10, 15, 20 years, yeah. you've invested so much Right. That actually when you let go, they will be absorbed somewhere else. Yes. And they will go with the wealth of investment that you've put in. Yes. So I will advise people to think about the but you know tomorrow of your business. Right. And then in you know passing on the baton, it says all oh, also, it's not about you and the company, mm -hmm. uh, you know, living 10 years, 20 years from today. Death happens and God forbid right. if today you as a business owner, if today you as the man of God in charge of your ministry uh, drops uh, and you go to be with the Lord, who takes after you? And you just make, made a decision out of pressure of COVID-19 and you let go talent that would have stood with your business. Right. So think about tomorrow. Think about uh, even as you cut cost, don't let everything go. All right. Yeah. All right. And we're going to be doing this uh, with Geoffrey for the next few weeks. We, I know he has just touched on one. He just talked about resilience, and we're talking about the principles of putting the getting. Uh, I mean, picking the pieces together. What do you need to do in this season to yeah. bounce back? Mm -hmm. Well, we can't just be shouting like you're coming back better than you were before. Let us, uh, you know, the just man fall seven times and mm -hmm. rises up. You know, again, and oh, if you are hit down, you will bounce up like a ball and you shout and scream. If you have no plan, yeah. you'll go down like a flat tire. So, mm -hmm. this is the reason why we are bringing you word <laughs> and we are bringing instruction to you. Mm -hmm. Commonwealth is back, and I'm so glad that we are back here with the CEO of Believers Economic Empowerment Program, that is Geoffrey Kilonzo, who runs a lot online as well. So, please check him out. Check him out on Facebook, check him out on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would just, you know, give your social media handles again. Yeah, Geoffrey Kilonzo is my our Facebook account and Believers Economic Empowerment Program, BIP is our page. Then on Instagram, Jeff underscore K, that's my, na my, my, my name. And you can go to LinkedIn, Geoffrey Kilonzo. Those are my most, my most active. Right. I'm not very active on Twitter. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's another street altogether. <laughs> Well, yes. I hope that you have been empowered. Please keep it right here next week, same time, just right here. Remember to subscribe to the Covenant channel because this is where we will be bringing to you the Commonwealth and of course on Facebook and everywhere else. But I need you to subscribe so that all this material, you keep on getting it. So mm -hmm. until next week, don't, don't miss, don't miss next week because we pick up part two of this conversation, picking up the pieces. God bless.